Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Where am I? I'm here. Okay, good Tuesday morning, everyone. Happy New Year to you. Monica Corrado here, the Gap Chef. Da -na 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 -na. It's Happy New Year. Happy New 2023 to every one of you. Um, again, my name is Monica Corrado. I am the Gap Chef. I, uh, that is her, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. I help to train the coaches and I also help to train the um, certified GAPS practitioners in all of the teaching. So, uh, for the GAPS diet, all the cooking for the GAPS diet. So, I thought I'd start today by, um, let's see, I thought I'd start today talking about New Year, New You. Um, yeah. Ask the Gap Chef. Hello, Victorious Valerie. Hooray! She's here. Um, so, what I thought we'd talk about today is, um, yeah, it's a new year. And so, many of you have already been on the Gap's diet for maybe a month, maybe six months, maybe six years, maybe somewhere in between. Um, hello, Edil. Hello, Karen. Yes, hello. So many of you have already been on the GAPS diet. Um, again, some of you are new to GAPS. Some of you are old hands. Some of you are somewhere in, in between. Some of you are doing this for your children. Some of you are doing GAPS for your spouses. Some of you are doing GAPS for yourself. Some of you uh, are doing GAPS for your parents or siblings or something. All of you are here because you are seeking to be well through food. You're seeking to be well. You're seeking to eat in a way that will help you um, to be, help your body to be nourished, to have what it needs to continually recreate itself. We remember that every cell in our body is being recreated. They are, they are being born, they are living, they are dying. They are being born, they are living, they are dying. They are being born, they are living, they are dying. We are in constantly, and we are constantly in a cycle of recreation. And so, what does GAPS do for us? GAPS allows us uh, to have the building blocks that we need, that our cells need in order to recreate in a strong blueprint, healthy way. That's what GAPS does for us. And so, and many, many other things. Right? We know that GAPS heals and seals. The foods we eat help to heal and seal the gut. Uh, the foods that we eat help to rebuild all of the uh, tissues in the body that were made of collagen. We have to eat the collagen. Yeah, The foods that we eat provide those critical vitamins A, D, E, K. Right? The foods that we eat provide the building blocks for um, for the body to be able to birth healthy cells, birth cells that are blueprint. They are the way they're supposed to be. Cells that are strong, cells that are able to do their work. You all know that I hope that I did a video back in May of last year that is called the Four Pillars of Gaps. And if you haven't seen it yet, I really suggest that you take a look at that because it talks about how Gaps actually works in my mind. Again, I I'm a certified Gaps practitioner and the Gaps chef. Um, I'm not Dr. Natasha, but my work is to accurately accurately represent her 
uh, information and her protocol and everything else, right? Uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do here. So, um, yeah. So GAPS does this wonderful thing for us of helping to supply the body with all of the information, um, the blueprint, right? It's like an architect that has blueprints for a perfect house. You would never want to build a house without a strong foundation, which is all of these beautiful foods. In any case, just letting everyone know that Four Pillars of Gaps is a video I did on Facebook Live. It's now sitting on my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen that yet, go to my name, Monica Corrado, where I've posted many of these uh, films, Ask the Gap Chef, right there. So I would look up the Four Pillars talk because it will give everyone People that are new to GAPS, people that are wondering about GAPS, people that are uh, have been doing GAPS for a long time. It'll give you a refresher, like, what is this thing called GAPS? Why do I want to do it? How does it work? What are the pieces? Can be overwhelming if you don't have a real sense of what are those things that we're doing here. So that's all there for you, and I'm very, very happy that uh, to provide that information for you. So... What did I want to talk about today to start with? First, let's say hello to everyone. Okay, uh, again, disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor. Nothing I say has been approved by the FDA. You already know that, everyone. Um, and um, while I am a certified GAPS practitioner, my main work uh, is to uh, help people understand how to use the diet to heal. Okay, how are we going to use the diet to heal? That is the question. Hopefully I have the answer. Meaning, how do we do the cooking? How do we do the sourcing? What's going on with my meat stock? What's going on with my kefir? What kind of vegetables are allowed? When? Why? What is intro? How do I cook for intro? How do I cook for full gaps? Etc. Etc. All right, that's why I have my little coat on for you. And that's why we talk about food. All right, let's say hello to everyone, 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 and then we'll get started. I already said hello to Victorious Valerie. Valerie, I got your thing about the donuts. I will definitely respond. Thank you for sending that to me, Victorious Valerie. If anyone else wants to send me a note, you can jump on my website, simplybeingwell.com. Go to contact. You can also see what else is there. I said hello to Ido Mohammed. I said hello to Karen. Hello, Laura. Hello, Veronica. So good to see you. Yes, Happy New Year. Hello, Uma. Thank you. Hello, beautiful Uma. Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much. Hello, Samira. Hello, Niska. Good to have you with us, Niska, too. Everyone that's with us that's on, that has let me know in the comments, welcome. Everyone that is with us that is not letting me know in the comments, welcome. Welcome, welcome to everyone. All right, so, so the first thing I've done is invited you all to go ahead and jump on uh, to watch. Hello, Muna. Good to see you. Um, to watch the video that I did on the four pillars of GAPS. Um, it is sitting on YouTube, Ask the GAP Chef. There's probably 30 videos there for you to learn to look at at your leisure and hopefully learn something that will be helpful to you. That is my intention with these uh, little videos that we're doing. So, hello, Shira. Yay. Happy New Year to you, too. That's funny. New Year, of course. All right. So what I thought we'd talk about today is New Year, New You, and resolutions and commitments and things like that. I think that many people, when they do the GAPS diet, they, um, or when they come to GAPS, they get overwhelmed. And um, I learned that when I work with people as clients, uh, because I do work with clients. Um, I hear that it's overwhelming, it's too big, it's, it's confusing, where do I start, when do I start, what do I do, and... Um, what I wanted to talk about today was just this idea of 
<clears throat> resolutions and commitments uh, for gaps. And I think it would be helpful. Hello, Gilda. Good to see you. Um, I think it would be helpful for all of us if you haven't done so already, and maybe you have, but uh, if you haven't done so already, to go ahead and do a little bit of thinking about what are my GAPS goals for this year? See my, I'm doing the old, yeah, eyebrow thing, like, what are the GAPS goals for this year? What are your GAPS goals uh, for this year? And I'm going to really suggest to you, uh, humbly of course, but suggest to you that whatever goals you choose, like I'm going to learn to make gelatinous meat stock. That's a cool goal. I'm going to take, I'm going to commit to having two cups or three cups of meat stock every day. That's a great goal. Um, I'm going to learn how to make kefir from milk. I'm going to source raw milk near me. I'm going to, if it's possible, of course, some people don't even have that option. I'm going to, what's another one? Try anything new on GAPS. I'm going to stretch out and learn how to make vegetable medley, which I did a whole talk on vegetable medley and why it's important and why it's good for you and why it should be part of everyone's diet in GAPS. So a lot of people have not done uh, vegetable medley. They ha don't have it as part of their diet. And it's really wonderful. Dr. Natasha goes very, very uh, deeply into why vegetable medley is so important in her um, blue book. How about, I'm going to try an enema this year. Hey, I know there's gapsters out there that have never done one. So I'm inviting that as a goal, right? Uh, I'm going to learn how to render my own healthy animal fats like tallow or lard. I'm going to, right, these are little discreet, little tiny goals. Things that are not, that should not be overwhelming. Things that are easily accomplished, right? Things that are easily accomplished, uh, but things that will make a very big difference for you. How about, you know, I do gaps a lot. I'm doing the diet, but I don't really have a very strong detox um, protocol. Remember, we talk about, I talk all the time about how there's, uh, there's the food, what we're eating and not eating, how we're preparing it, how we're eating it, etc. And then there's the detox, detoxification that has to happen right alongside of the food. So maybe you're really good at the food. Like, yeah, I know how to make my ferments. And yeah, I know how to culture my dairy. And yeah, my meat stock is gelling. But I never take an Epsom salt bath. Hmm. Or I never do an enema. Or I really don't get outside for 10 to 20 minutes every day in the sun, no matter where you live, right? Or hmm, any of those things, right? So these are little, discreet, discreet meaning little uh, things that you can just check off the box. And I really encourage you to, uh, to start somewhere to try something new in this year with GAPS, to, if you have the yellow book, get the blue book. If you have the blue book and not the, get the yellow book. Have you read the red book, the red book on heart health after my talk last week? Um, how many different ways do you know how to make yogurt? Hmm. I know that I have at least one, two, three, Maybe four different ways to make your five different ways to make yogurt in my book, right? Like, have you tried each one? I encourage you to, right? How about new ferments? Like, I'm so tired of sauerkraut. Cool. 
Have you tried making fermented beets? Have you tried making fermented cucumbers, otherwise known as pickles? Have you tried fermenting meat yet? Have you, uh, how's your casserole status? Um, you know, like, or maybe one of your goals could be, hmm, I think I'll try, uh, I'll get a new set of pots this year. Maybe I'll buy myself a new crock pot this year. Maybe I'll, right, like what are these little things that you could do that could help you so much? Um, baby steps. You know me, I'm the baby steps queen. I'm actually the stair step method queen, right? Like increase a little, stay at that level, increase a little, stay at that level, increase a little, stay at the, that's the stair step method that I, maybe I should start over here. Do, 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 do. Like the side of a staircase, right? Anyway, these are just kind of some things that I wanted to uh, just bring up. Um, gaps can get, <clears throat> gaps or anything, anything that we do can get boring. Anything that we do can get uh, boring. Yeah, like I see sometimes on this group, I see people saying, oh, I'm so tired of chicken stock. And I say, Excellent. Have you made duck stock, turkey stock, lamb stock, goat stock, bison stock, beef stock? Right, folks? So I really encourage you to um, try new things. How about, have you tried herbs in your stock? How about rosemary? How about thyme, T-H-Y-M-E? How about lemongrass? How about um, marjoram? How about basil? How about, right? Like, really, I, I get so sad when I see people that are um, bored with gaps. And I just think, yep, they're bored because they keep doing the same thing over and over again. And I hope that you are um, getting some kind of inspiration uh, to do things a little bit differently this year just a little bit differently. Remember that every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. Every time in the kitchen is a new time in the kitchen. Every time you make meat stock is a new, right? A new pot of meat stock. So I get very sad as I say, when people say, I'm sick of gaps, I'm tired of gaps, gaps, I'm bored with gaps. And I say, you know what? Gaps is French food without the baguette and the wine. Now, if you're on full, go have the wine. Without the bread. Gaps is French cooking. I don't know why there's any reason to be sad or to be bored. Quite frankly, I really just don't. So anyway, I just really invite you folks to take a moment when you're making out your resolutions. Take a moment when you're thinking about what you'd like to do differently this year. Take a moment and invite yourself to do something different with GAPS. And uh, I'm always happy to help you uh, have more ideas, etc. 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 All right. Let me see. <clears throat> what else have we got here? We've got we've got Victorious Valerie saying, make gravy for meat stock. Yes. Add meat stock to flavor certain foods. Absolutely. That's fantastic. All right. We're working up here. Dill Aura. Hello. I can't thank you enough for all the info and tips you give and knowledge you share. You're welcome. I tried gaps last year and failed. Now I know why. Now I know why. Thanks to you, I've been binge watching all your videos on YouTube. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm happy they help. I'm really happy they help, folks, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What do we got here? We've also got uh, Laura says this year I'm going to have more animals, pigs, so I don't have to buy. Excellent. That's another wonderful thing. Sourcing. Can you source more beautiful food near you? Can you meet new farmers? Can you talk to your neighbors about doing a co-op buy? All sorts of things like that. Maybe you can't do a whole 
half a cow, but maybe you and your neighbor could do split a half a cow, split a half a pig, right? Possibilities. 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 All right, let me see what else we have. Hello, Hilda. Good to have you. Good to have you with us and everyone else. All right. Dill says, um, there's something else that I missed. Hold on. I'm trying to see what I missed. So I would love for all of you in this moment, I know I'm putting you on the spot, Aruni. I would love for all of you in this moment to think just for a moment about what one thing you could add into your diet or what one thing you could do differently on gaps. What one thing could you venture into? How about this? I'm going to commit to reading the blue book, uh, two pages of the blue book every night until it's done. Fabulous. I'm going to commit to, I make a, res, a resolve to go to gaps.me every time I have a question about gaps that I don't understand. And, and look at the FAQs, right? It's another wonderful thing. So I would love to have some, I would love to have you, if you're if you're up for it, again, this is a, a last minute, I, I'm springing on you. I'm springing it on you. Yeah, I'm springing it on you. If you want to put one thing into the into the comments that you will do this year differently. All right. Anyone who wants to do it. All right, let's see. Look at this. Okay, let's see where I can go here. It won't let me go. Yes, I'm going to go up, 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 up. Okay, Dill says, you said to drink lemon water with turmeric first thing in the morning to wake the liver up. Okay. Hold on. All right. Where are you? Hold on. I see, you know what, I'm going to start from the top and come down, folks, because sometimes I can't get to the comments later. So I'll get back to you in a second, Dill. Let's get to Karen. Karen said, you just started kefir shakes. Seems like a success. Any other suggestions for using kefir with my kids? Um, depending on where you are in GAPS, if you're on the full GAPS diet, certainly you could add blueberries or blackberries to the kefir. Um, that's what I would do with the with the kids. Uh, also, do not be afraid to add, uh, to combine, everybody, don't be afraid to combine kefir made from milk, kefir, with some cultured cream. Oh my God, that is so delicious. So that's also a way to get it yummy. Some people like to freeze kefir into pops, but depending on where you are, right now in the northern hemisphere, we are in winter. So, of course, you're, if you're in Florida, it's 80 degrees uh, to make kefir ice pops, ice cream pops. Those are another idea. That is another idea to do. All right, let's get to Dill. Dill says, you said to drink lemon water with turmeric first thing in the morning to wake the liver up. Yes. I am also drinking the Gap Shake first thing in the water. Which one comes first? So usually lemon water comes first. Remember that lemon is specific to the liver in that it wakes up liver, the liver and liver enzymes. Turmeric is an anti-inflammatory. Um, so lemon water is a wonderful thing to drink first and then your Gap Shake. Yep, wonderful. Shira says, I want to incorporate more organ meats and learn how to cook it. Excellent. I love that. Good, good, good. Let's see what else we've got. Carol. Hey, Carol. Carol's here. Carol Higginson, read the blue book cover to cover. I love that. Excellent. Brianna says, I want to start making pure beauty products, soap and lotion. Excellent. Yay, yay, yay. I love this. All of these are excellent. Whatever's right for you is excellent. Okay, I will find different ways to get more gelled meat stock in, into my diet for Victorious Valerie. Excellent. I love it. I love it. Karen. Hey, Karen. Hi, Karen. Add in vegetable medley. Believe it or not, I have yet to make it. Karen, you are kidding me. I won't tell anyone. I promise. I won't tell everyone at you. Victorious Valerie says, I recently started adding kefir cream and I am loving it. Yes. I always find ways to incorporate kefir cream. I have to tell you, folks, that's my favorite. Monica's favorite is kefir cream. I wouldn't even bother with milk kefir. But I'm a cream girl. I love it. It's yummy. All right. Let's see what else. 
Fatima says, if you are just introducing kefir, make sure to start with kefir cream. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. With cream kefir. You're welcome, Monica. Ha ha. Yes, Fatima, that's exactly how to do it. Okay, I'm getting back to cacao butter in a moment. Let's go back up here. Let's see. Other questions so I don't lose you, folks. That's why I'm going back up. Okay, Samira asks, when is the right time to move to the next stage? What do we mean by if tolerated and adding food? Really good, Samira. So the first thing I would do, I do believe I did a Facebook Live on this. It's called the step-by-step -step method of adding in foods. That is on Ask the Gap Chef videos, YouTube. It also might be called Managing Die Off. Look at those two videos. They're both going to be excellent for you. So if we're talking about the GAPS intro diet, which is what we're talking about when you say, when is the right, right time to move to the next stage? If we're talking about the GAPS intro diet, if tolerated in general means that you're, you can eat that food or drink that beverage and not have any symptoms right? Show up. So that's different than die off, folks, okay? So tolerating a food means there's no digestive distress. There's no meaning. What does that mean? That means there's no constipation. There's no diarrhea. There's no cramping. There's no, um, yeah, no cramping, no bloating, no diarrhea, no digestive distress. That means you're tolerating the food. So that's what it means to tolerate. In terms of um, how to move to the next stage, you move to the next stage once all of the foods in that stage are tolerated. Now, caveat. Some people will not do well on nuts and seeds. I talked about nuts and seeds a while back and the fact that nuts and seeds introduced in stage three as nut butter uh, or seed butter and introduced in stage four as, um, what do we call that? Baked goods, right? Baked basic bread. Um, a lot of people do not tolerate nuts and seeds, Dr. Natasha and her certified GAPS practitioners have found. And therefore, um, we drop the nuts and seeds and we skip over them. We don't include them. How would we know that we don't tolerate nuts and seeds or nut and seed butter? or fermented basic bread, nut or seed bread, um, we would, again, have diarrhea, we could, we could cramp, we could get constipated, or we could have our other symptoms show up. So Dr. Natasha does go into nuts and seeds and how they are problematic. I also talked about this last week, no, two weeks ago when I talked about full gaps challenges and possibilities, right? So that might be helpful for you to take a look at. Um, so I was trying to say that intro diet is six stages. There are foods in every stage that you should tolerate before you move to the next stage. Meaning, so let's just take stage two. Let's take stage one. Three to five days, people. Do not stay on stage one for more, to five, more than five days. It's too strong of a stage. Uh, really, that's straight from Dr. Natasha in her teaching when we teach together. So three to five days, stage one. Stage two, uh, you can stay on forever because it's nutrient, uh, very, very packed with nu nutrients. Um, but in stage two, what do we do? We introduce egg yolks. We introduce egg yolks, egg yolk into... Uh, meat stock or soup or casserole or stew. We introduce egg yolks and we have to tolerate. That means we have to be able to eat with ease three to six egg yolks before we move to the whole egg. That's for adults, right? Three to six for adults. And then we go and we add in the egg white, right? So now we're having poached eggs in our soup, in our stock, in our stew, etc. 
So eggs are one of those things that can be tricky for people because they can be hard to introduce. If you think there's going to be an issue with eggs, if you are concerned about problems with eggs, this is not anaphylaxis. We do not try to introduce any food that people have anaphylactic reaction to on GAPS. We don't. Um, but let's just say you have had problems with eggs before, your child, so what do we do? We do the, we do the skin test with the yolk on the wrist overnight. If there's no angry red spot, then we start bringing in egg yolks. Start sometimes again. If you think that there's going to be an issue, start with a little bit of an egg yolk. Don't start with a whole egg yolk. Start with a half a teaspoon of an egg yolk. Start with a drop of an egg yolk in an entire bowl of soup or stew or stock, right? And then once you're having, once you slowly build up to having three or four or five egg yolks every day, then if you're concerned about egg whites, do the skin test, right? Do you have to do the skin test for every food? No. Do you do it for the foods that you're concerned about? Yes. And then tolerate. Do you get up to three or four or more whole eggs in your stock, in your soup, in your stew? Then you can move to the next uh, stage. So tolerated means that it does not, bringing in a food does not bring any um, regression. It doesn't bring any symptoms back, right, from the previous stage that might have resolved in the previous stage. Tolerating means, again, no digestive uh, distress, no, no uh, cramping, no diarrhea, no um, uh, constipation, etc. I hope that's helpful. So really, we are supposed to, everyone in, in an intro is supposed to be able to tolerate every food in, in, in each stage before they go to the next stage. And when you get to the next stage, you continue to have all of those foods from stage one and stage two. You bring them with you into stage three. And then when you, when you graduate from stage three, then you take everything from one and two and three and take them into four. And that's how we go. And we go slowly, folks. I know that there are books out there on gaps that say you only need to be on each stage for two to three days. That's absolutely incorrect. Um, remembering stage one, three to five days. Every other stage is going to take you some time to get through that stage. It's not just, oh, I tried egg yolk, I'm good. Let me move to the next stage. No, 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 no. It's, I tried egg yolk. And now I'm eating egg yolks every day. And now once I can eat three or four egg yolks every day, now I'm going to add in the whole egg. And now I'm eating three or four whole eggs every day. So even if you were to go one egg yolk, one egg yolk one day, and then you added another, which is fast, day two, and then you added another one day three, and then you decide, oh, I want to start adding in whites, and you go ahead and you're talking about six days to start for stage two at a minimum. So, and that's like, whoa, going really fast. So I hope that's helpful, Samira. Do ask more questions if you need to get more clarification. Okay. All right. Uma says, in full GAPS diet, how many vegetables do we need to eat per week? None. I'm sorry. I'm being bratty. Um, so unlike me, right? <laughs> Joke. Okay, so I watched somewhere saying you need to eat 30 different vegetables, color per week. What do you recommend? When you're on the full GAPS diet, eat as many vegetables as you like. Make sure that they are organic uh, or clean, right? Pesticide free. Grow them yourself. People are all over the world, so just get the cleanest vegetables that you can. Um, and then eat the vegetables that you love. Of course, there is something to be said about the eating the rainbow, right? Orange and red and green and blue and yellow. There are different, um, I don't really want to say nutrients, kind of nutrients, but um, 
certainly different antioxidants and things like that and different color vegetables. Uh, but yeah, eat what you love, eat what your body loves, eat it with a lot of fat. And remember that vegetables are cleansers and animal foods are builders. Right? We all remember that, right? Dr. Tasha says it over and over. Plant foods are cleansers. Animal foods are builders. So that's why I say don't go too crazy on the plants unless you've already healed and sealed the gut and you love vegetables, right? There's, there's more plant gaps that Dr. Natasha talks about in, uh, in the Blue Book. All right. I recommend eating whatever you love, Uma, and as many as you want that feels good to your body. And that's also going to depend on what season is it. When it's summer, you may want to eat more vegetables because you want to eat lighter because it's hot. Or maybe you live in an area of the world that's hot all the time. Maybe you want to eat more vegetables because it's hot, right? When you live in areas that are very cold or you're in winter, you're going to want to eat more grounding, uh, warm cooked vegetable uh, animal foods. I hope that's helpful. All right, golly, we've got a lot of stuff going on over here. Okay, let me get in over here. Da, 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 All right. Hi, Chef. How many vegetables, raw vegetables, can I introduce on stage five before I go to the next stage? Remember, Natasha, I'm glad you're asking this. Um, so, remembering that intro diet is the place where we're healing a lot. I would, um, I'm not saying you don't on full, but intro diet. I would introduce three or four maybe. Hold on, let me check my chart. You all know that you have a um, a free download, I hope, of my intro diet chart on this page. Looked at featured posts. Please do check featured posts. There's all sorts of good um, articles that I've written and things for you. So here's my latest new book, everybody. Yeah, hardcover. Look at that. Ooh, binding. Ooh, index in the back, etc. Let me go look and see what we can do for. I just want to grab this. I am going to grab intro diet. Let's look at stage four. She wants to know stage four. Okay. Um, fresh carrot juice. Stage five is where we introduce raw vegetables. And I would introduce the raw vegetables that Dr. Natasha has listed, which are lettuce, peeled cucumber, then peeled carrots, then tomatoes, then onions, then cabbage, etc. And then move on, right? Okay. Let's see. They won't let me go up any further. Karen says, I'm looking for more information regarding night terrors with children. You know what, Karen, I would jump, first of all, I work with people all the time on night terrors, so I don't know if you want to get on my calendar and we can talk about what's going on with your children. Um, I would go back and look at my um, Facebook Live, Ask the Gap Chef on Trauma. Trauma. That's where I would, I would look at my Facebook Live on Trauma. And then I would also look at uh, Rescue Remedy. I would look at Rock Rose. That's a Bach flower remedy. Um, I would look at Mimulus, M-I-M-U-L-U-S, also. All right. What are people doing? They're just, things are just moving. I'm not sure why they are not allowing me to move up in comments. It's really, so if I don't get to you folks, get back, put it back in because they're not allowing me to move on the comments, which is so weird. All right. Let's see what else I can get to. Hilda wants to find a good source of chicken feet and, and heads to gel your stock. Go for it, Hilda. You get an A++ for that one. Everybody does. Uma says, if you become constipated with kefir or add sour cream, yes, absolutely it helps to avoid constipation. Yes. You can also just make kefir cream. Uma, right? Make kefir cream, right? That means cream that's cultured with kefir, K-E-F-I-R. All right, Dill says, regarding supporting the liver, do you know if dandelion root tea or milk thistle seed tea are safe while breastfeeding? Okay, so 
couple things, dill and everybody else. Milk thistle tea is always, I believe, is always safe because milk thistle is about supporting the liver. Dandelion root tea is more about detoxification. So if I were breastfeeding, which I did with my son 17 years ago, maybe 18 now, um, I would I would th I would think that milk thistle seed tea is fine um, as long as it's organic and uh, I would probably not do the dandelion root because that would be detoxing so one supports and one detoxifies I would not be doing detoxification things that's me that's the word according to Monica so I give you my best all right let's see about Brianna hey Brianna good to have you hello Veronica again all right ba 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 Let's see. Um, Brianna says, we are on extended stage two. Excellent. My kids love beets pickled in vinegar. Is that allowed on extended stage two? Are they pickled in apple cider vinegar? That would be my question, Brianna. Um, I would also, frankly, ferment them. So here's the thing, folks. I do go, uh, I do talk about the difference between fermentation and pickling in my book. You can look at that. When you pickle, they're pickled in vinegar and sugar, and beets are already full of sugar. So if it were me, Brianna, I would ferment the beets first, and then I would serve them with apple cider vinegar on top. That's how we get rid of the sugar in the beets right they're pre-digested and then add the apple cider vinegar on top now is apple cider vinegar okay on stage two i would do it apple cider vinegar is fine in water starting in stage one to help increase stomach acid so yes hope that was helpful okay veronica asked is it okay to put a not so tasty fermented veggies into another but tasty fermented veggie juice and leave it on the fridge for a few days yes of course for example, I put two garlicky turnip to the ferment of beetroots. Yes, absolutely, Veronica. Good idea. I love it. Great, great, great thing to do. Yes, yes. All right, Uma says, can I cook meat stock lamb and oxtail at the same time? So if your meat stock lamb, uh, Uma, is lamb neck bones, I would say yes. If your meat stock lamb... Um, is um, something else like a roast with a meat with a joint in it I would say no remember that when we're cooking for meat stock folks oxtail is the longest cooking meat stock we've got because it takes a long time to get that beautiful uh, cartilage between each one of the pieces of the tail to dissolve into the water so I would just um, I would make that caveat, Uma. Hope that's helpful. All right. Here's Brea. <clears throat> Brea Lynn, how do you differentiate between... <laughs> I love this question. How do you differentiate between die-off and symptoms? I read the gaps.me answers and still feel unsure. This is why, Brea Lynn, because it doesn't matter. I know. Dr. Natasha gets this question all the time. I am so blessed to teach with her for the coaches and the and the uh, and the practitioners, which allows me to hear what she's what she's thinking like in real time. Like we taught together like in December, and again in November. Blah blah blah. So she says, doesn't matter. Who cares? I know that's too strong. I'll say it differently. So how do you differentiate between die off and symptoms? So. I'll give you what I know, and then I'll go in and see what else. All right. I feel like we never have a baseline and are always having symptoms. I'm starting to wonder if we're reacting to the broth conversion of glutamate to oxalates. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm, I'm totally kidding with you, Brea. Just been eating meats and broth for so long and starting to feel like giving up. No giving up. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but I'm not a giver-upper, as many of you can tell. Um, so, uh, all right, die off again. I have a video on this, so go check it out on ask the gap chef on YouTube, but die off. What is die off? Die off is when one of two things happens. Either one, we starve the pathogens because we take away their food supply of sugar 
and they die off, right? When else do we have die off? When we add in new probiotic foods, and those probiotic foods, right, like from kefir and yogurt and vegetable medley and sauerkraut, whatever, they come in, the good guys come in, and they, <coughs> the bad guys, and the bad guys die off. They die, right? So that's how we have die off. Die off is either from starving the pathogens because you just got into the diet and you've now taken out grains and sugar and processed foods and all sorts of other things, or because you've added in foods which will have them die off, meaning probiotic foods, that's ferments or cultured dairy, or also meat stock can cause die off. And also, um, when you first bring it in, really, or when you increase your amounts, right? So maybe you're doing a tablespoon of meat stock every day, and then you go, oh, well, today I'm really thirsty, so I'll have half a cup. Yeah, you might have die off, right? So egg yolks will also cause die off or can. Liver, bringing liver in for the first time can also uh, cause die off. All right. So symptoms. Symptoms are things like symptoms. Things like joint pain, things like migraines, things like in general. But the reality is this. Symptoms and die-off can look the same. How does die-off look when it happens to you? It could look like diarrhea. It could look like, usually it looks like diarrhea, not so much constipation. So it could look like diarrhea. It could look like an eczema flare through your skin. It could look like uh, inflamed joints. It could look like migraines. It could look like, you know, headaches. Could look like fatigue. Could look like all sorts of things. So the reality is it doesn't really matter what, I know, but in reality, it doesn't really matter what caused the symptom. If you're having die off, what can you do? Or you're having symptoms manifest, what can you do? You can take a detox bath. You can maybe take two a day, three a day. You can do enemas. You can up your detoxification. When you're having symptoms, folks, or when, it's a very good question, Brea. When you're having symptoms or you're having, you're having symptoms, you're having die off, really important to support the detoxification in the body. Support the detox system of the body. How do you do that? I have a whole thing on detox baths, the five of them. That's another video. I have a whole thing on, uh, certainly we talk about enemas and all sorts of other detoxes. Take a look at that for sure. Just been eating meats and broth for so long. So why are you just eating meats and broth for so long, Brea? Give me more because, uh, yeah, why, why just eat meats and, and broth for so long? I also rolled my eyes at the conversion of glutamate to oxalates. I'm sorry about that, folks, but... But really, um, if you're having problems with oxalates, again, there are some people who have really strong problems with oxalates, but most people don't. And um, if you're one that does, I'm sorry, this is not pertaining to you. But for most people, when you heal and seal the gut, the problem with the oxalates goes down, decreases. All right? All right. Oh, Samira, thank you. Let me just say you are amazing. I love that. I'll take it. That makes me feel great today. Thank you. Thanks, Samira. Natalie Bean, on stage one, should you start with only stock? Stage one is meat stock. That's stock. You can also have the meat and the vegetables in the stock. And you can have blended soups made from vegetables that you cook in stock on stage one. And you're eating all of the fat that's in there, you're eating all of the meat, you're eating all of the veggies, unless you're doing no plant because you are working with severe case of diarrhea or also, <clears throat> pardon me, perhaps you have um, IBS or uh, colitis. Then you would do no plant. If you want to learn about no plant, jump into the blue book. Dr. Natasha talks all about it. Okay, so Natalie, I'm guessing that you haven't looked at my at your free uh, intro diet chart, because if you had, 
you would um, you would know the answer. Go grab it, print it out, put it on your fridge, la la la, etc. All right, Dill says, I am exclusively breast breastfeeding and also have been struggling with eczema on my hands and for the past two years, so I want to do full gaps. How should I transition my diet to full gaps? Should I follow intro while keeping rice and sourdough bread to minimize diet? It's a good question. I want to do full gaps. Dill and everyone else, if you want to transition to full gaps, I suggest that you slowly start taking out all the foods that are not on the gaps diet. Okay, so you can do that once a week. You could do that once a month. Find your own pace. It's all perfect. Okay, listen to your body. I'll say it a million times. Dr. Natasha says it a million times. I've got wild hair today, everybody. All right, Dr. Natasha says that a million times. Listen to your body. Your body is so funny. <laughs> your body is uh, in charge. Listen to it, right? So. I would be personally doing those things like, what do you do first? Take out all processed foods. No more processed food in my diet. Do that for a week or two weeks, a month. Okay, I'm taking it, no more sugar. I'm taking out all sugar from my diet. Do that for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. Start, keep going. Okay, uh, I'm going to no longer eat rice. Take that out. Week, two weeks, three weeks later. I'm going to start adding in fats, lots of animal fats. Then what's your next thing? So I would just still take, make, figure out what works for you. Uh, I want to say, folks, eczema, you have an eczema issue. This is, again, what I understand. We must take out all sugar from the diet and add in lots and lots of milk kefir, kefir cream and kefir milk kefir. Please do, Dill and everyone else, jump on into featured posts on this page and go read the article on eczema. That would be helpful. Hello, Mutsa. Good to have you. Hello, Lise. Woohoo! Nice to have you with us. All right. Um, let's see, Lise. Regarding stage and time, such an important explanation. I find that clients consider this as a race to finish. And it is just not like that. When we stop and remember that GAPS helps us heal our gut, the body then dictates how fast that goes. Yes. Lisa is also a fabulous, another fabulous certified GAPS practitioner and homeopath. So remembering everyone that homeopathy is absolutely a tremendous, uh, can be a tremendous help during the GAPS diet. And it's also absolutely okay to do. Dr. Natasha loves homeopathy. Jump on homeopathy for help with eczema, for help with constipation, for help with all sorts of things. Leash, you are welcome to throw your website on this chat if you, if you like. But yes, that's wonderful. Clients consider this a race. This is not a race. This can be deeply healing. This is all about listening to the body. How can I nourish you, body? What do you need from me? What is it? And the answer will be many, many, many of the foods on the GAPS diet. Listen to your body. She, the, the body, is very wise. Okay. All right, Braylon says, again, we're getting close to time here. To clarify, symptoms are behavioral, emotional, and significant joint pain. Yep. We do daily enemas and different detox baths, drink salt water, eat chicken, goat, sheep, and pork. Great. What I would be doing, Braylon, is make sure that they're having enough fat. I did do uh, uh, a YouTube on fats, animal fats. Really, most people are not eating enough fat, whether you're a child or an adult. We want to be having lots of animal fats. We're talking additional four tablespoons, five tablespoons, six tablespoons of fat a day. If you are not able to handle that much fat because you have nausea, add in ox bile, add in organic bitters, add in um, those are really the best things to add in. And make sure you're drinking enough beet kvass. All right. 
Mutsa says, thank you for suggesting that I go back to stage two for my son who kind of like regressed. I'm seeing some positive improvements. Yes, go Mutsa. I love it. I'm very happy to hear that. Good for you. Okay. Yep, pins and needles in the feet. Pins and needles in the feet is usually nerve. Uh, I'm happy to have Lise jump in on that if she wants to throw something in there. And the, but pins and needles is usually nerves. To me, I would be looking at chiropractic and subluxations. You're welcome, Uma. Okay. Fatima says, Gaps diet is more a bio-individual approach. In the blue book, Dr. Natasha mentions that your ancestral way of eating should also be considered Absolutely. If you are from Africa, you may crave more food than others or different foods. Very good. Fatima, thank you for that for sure. All right. Hamda says, in tropical countries, do you still need from... Everyone needs fermented foods, everybody. Everyone needs fermented foods. Did I say that? Let's do three times. Everyone needs fermented foods. So fermented vegetables, fermented fruits, fermented tonics, fermented beverages, fermented meat. Ferment it, ferment it, ferment it. Why? Maybe I should talk about that next week. Next week we're going to talk about why ferment, and that's going to be a lot of fun because I can spend a bunch of time on it. But yes, everyone needs it. Yes, where can I get your intro diet chart? Mutsa, go to featured posts in this group. It's right there. You can download it, okay? Yes, Lee says Aspen. Yep, Bach flower essences. I love them. Good, good, good. Let's see what else we get. Fatima says homeopathy for night terrors are amazing. Absolutely. Good. Lise, I had said rock rose for terror, but that's my own personal and maybe some rescue remedy. But I love aspens, one of my faves. Okay. Leonie. Hey, Leonie, how are you? Monica, you seem to have your bounce back. Is your dad doing better? No, my dad is in hospice. But thank you. I have my bounce back because I'm here with you and I'm teaching and I so appreciate this group and the ability to be with you and talk with you and share what I know about GAPS. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Mutsa, thanks for the classification about dandelion milk thistle teas. Yes. Yes. They are both for liver support, but my understanding, dandelion root is really about detox. Milk thistle is about support. Esther, hello, Esther, can you mix kefir and yogurt and smoothie? Yes, have fun. Mix all your co your uh, cultured dairy together, folks. Mix yogurt with kefir. Mix, mix yogurt with kefir cream. Mix kefir cream with kefir. Mix it all up. Have a good time. Everything's good. Whatever feels good to you. All right, Brianna says thank you. Excellent. Good, 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 Brianna. I'm glad that helped her. So it doesn't matter if you keep inflaming ourselves. You know, Brea, you are, a, this is more complicated than let's talk about this on a Facebook Live. Um, no, it does matter. Uh, we don't want you to keep inflaming yourself. But, of course, because inflammation is not fun and doesn't feel good. So if you're feeling inflamed, back up to the previous step. I don't know where you are in GAPS. I don't know if you're on full. I don't know if you're on stage four. I don't know if, if you're on stage two. I don't know if you're doing no plant. I don't have enough information to really tell you. I can't ever tell anybody exactly what to do anyway. But I we don't tolerate veggies and always have symptoms. So what I would humbly suggest, can you heal the gut when you're always inflamed? Um, you know, the other thing is, I need, I, as a practitioner, need for people to actually get to the point of talking about how they feel in their bodies as opposed to what diagnoses or what terms people are picking up. So if you can tell me how you know that you're inflamed, I know you said joints, that's great, but um, a lot of people throw around words like inflammation and you know, histamine intolerance and things, and really they're just getting things from other GAPS groups. Hold on a minute, people. I'm sorry about this. Yep. Okay. Um, so we would need to talk more about how you know in your body you're inflamed. So if anyone is not comfortable in any stage or on any stage, then we take a deep breath. 
and we back up a stage. Or we take a deep breath, right? And we start over. Or we work with a GAPS practitioner or things like that. So Brea, I'm sorry that you are all having difficulty. Truly, I am. But uh, the main thing in GAPS is if you are not well on a stage, then we go backwards to the last stage. And we start slowly, and then we go from there. There may be some things that you're not doing in GAPS that you could do differently. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for now. Hello, Tiff. Can we have canned sardines? Absolutely. But, you know, again, canned is not so good. Maybe you can get them in a jar. Just try to make sure it's BPA-free. And, yes, canned sardines in olive oil. Since olive oil is something that comes in in stage four, I would have them on stage four and going forward. Make sure they're clean, etc. Hello, Tiff. All right. So... Mutsa says, I had the same problem, but when my children started eating gaps, I also stopped eating sugar, and now my hands are clear. Go, Mutsa! <laughs> Hooray. All right. Let's see. This is from Lise. This is such a great session, Monica. And yes, you are amazing. Thank you so much, Lise. The detox issue die-off symptoms are an interesting and helpful distinction. When my gaps clients come with blocked exit pathways already are constipated lung issues or are already with skin issues we find that using homeopathic prescriptions or cell salts that address, address those issues first things go pretty smoothly yes rock and roll amen i agree 100 percent uh folks i can't tell you enough how much homeopathy can help you and your children it's an amazing modality i wish i knew more about it i rely on my friend Lise to tell me other things that i need to know uh, but do explore it. It's a fabulous modality to use in conjunction with the diet. There she is. Yep. Recovernaturally.com. Okay. Hello, Cynthia. Oh, my God. This live is amazing. Excellent. So glad I found you from the OG GAPS group. Oh, I don't know what OG is. Stoked to get the book, too. You are hilarious and informative. Loving it. Thank you, Cynthia. Rock and roll. Welcome. Come on down. Let's see. Hmm. Mutsa, you can hang out and Mutsa, check in with that uh, link right above you. Okay. All right. Pins and needles can also be mold. Okay. I didn't know. Thank you for that, Lise. Okay. My issue is that pins and needles only happen after broth increase or days when I have liver. Okay. Well, then here's what I would say. Back down on the broth and don't eat liver for a while and then start with less okay <laughs> love my chant everyone needs fermented foods I would love to see a new model plate and the fermented foods are at the center yes absoluto monte yes I can try to make an appointment just message on Facebook yes you can Brea that would be just fine Tiff says thank you for sharing your knowledge I have a second question all right this is my last question because we're seven minutes over now I have a second question. I ran out of liver. Can I add the dehydrated capsules <laughs> to my meals? Would it be beneficial at all if cooked? Tiff and everyone else, dehydrated organ meats are fine. Make sure that the capsules do not have glyphosate in them, please. Um, yes, you can sprinkle them on anywhere you want and get them in, Tiff. Yep, just get them into people. Get them into your people. Yep, you are great. Thank you, Mutsa. All right. Cacao butter, please. Laura, cacao butter. Um, cacao butter. I think cacao butter would be just fine. Um, let me look it up for you. Cacao butter as a fat, I think would be fabulous. So let's say yes, shall we? And then if I find anything to the contrary, my understanding is cacao butter is fine. That's not cacao, right? That's a fat, and the fat would be good for you. But remember, everyone, we want to be having animal fats. Animal fats are what we need most. Plant fats, vegetable kingdom fats, less. Brea Lynn says, thank you for being awesome. Thank you. That's so sweet. All right, everybody. Thank you for being with me today. 
Thank you, Carol. Thank you for your prayers. I appreciate them. We need them. And I appreciate them deeply. Blessings to all of you. Happy, happy new year. Happy, happy new you. Happy, happy new things in gaps. Again, I'm going to do the pitch one more time, which is I challenge. That's too strong. I invite. I'm inviting all of you. Find one thing that you want to do differently in gaps. Find one thing that you want to try. Find one thing so that you can have a new relationship with the GAPS diet, which is really a way of life and really is incredibly nourishing and healing on so many levels. And whatever you do before you eat, please, three breaths, do the mealtime ritual that Dr. Natasha has in both in the yellow book and the blue book, do the mealtime ritual three deep breaths before you eat so that your body can actually be in a place to digest that beautiful food that you just took all the time to source, to purchase, to prepare. Now bring yourself into a place where you allow your body to receive it and, uh, and it can digest and absorb it. All right. Thank you, everyone. Veronica, Laura, Hamda, Niska, thank you so much for your blessings. Blessings to all of you, and we will see you next week. Same GAPS time, same GAPS channel. Okay, be well, everyone. Bye-bye now.